Hi, my name is Fon and I'm here to review the Miss Marvel Omnibus Volume 1. No, not Carol Danvers, Kamala Khan. This review may contain some light spoilers, but I won't give everything away, just on the essentials that would need to be discussed. This Omnibus covers Kamala's first comic run, which started back in April 2014 to December 2015, containing the first four volumes just before Secret Wars happened, which, long story short, is kind of like the Crisis of Infinite Earths for Marvel, going for a soft reboot. I'm not here to talk about that, I'm here to talk about this. This comic is written by G. Willow Wilson, along with editor Sana Amanat that follows our main hero Kamala Khan. But who is she? Kamala Khan is an early American Pakistani Muslim teenager from Jersey City who deals with life growing up in the world around her and as a rookie superhero, she helps out people, take on bad guys and cracks some jokes while doing it. Gee, doesn't that sound like a certain friendly neighborhood? <clears throat> Meanwhile, there are definitely some similarities between the characters, Kamala does have enough differences, such as how she got her powers for inhaling a certain gas. Mm, doesn't that also sound familiar? Okay, in all seriousness, like Static, she is a minority that definitely shares some similar traits to Spider-Man, but they also have enough differences to have their own identities rather than just being pure caricatures. Like I've mentioned earlier, she is a nerd, a fan girl even, given that she's a huge fan of superheroes which living in a Marvel universe would kind of be like celebrities, with her favorite being Captain Marvel. One thing to note is that Kamala actually made her first appearance in Captain Marvel number 14, being a background character while Carol Danvers was fighting off some threats. She even likes to make fan fictions featuring her favorite heroes. He's also into gaming, movies, comics, and mangas even. Our Spider-Man is more of a science nerd. To delve a bit more to her personality, she is a nice friendly person with some quirkiness and sass to her, and she has shown to be quite introverted. I and mean, she does have her two best friends that she definitely hangs out with, which we do see them do so in the circle queue early in the start of the first issue. With that being said, in the first issue, it establishes that she wants to feel more like a normal American teenager. That's not to say that she hates her culture by any means. However, she wants to embrace being a regular American teenager without being too restricted by it. So after some banter, two of Kamala's classmates come in, Zoe Zimmer, who is a popular girl in their class, along with her boyfriend Josh Richardson. Anyway, they try to invite Kamala and her friends to the party, but Kamala says that she probably isn't allowed to go. Therefore, one him to fit in, she asks permission from her father if she's allowed to attend the party, and he replies saying no, so she decides to sneak out and attend the party. However, after arriving to the party, she does see Zoe, who is surprised that she even turned up, and she kind of ends up teasing her. So Josh offers her some orange juice. However, it contains some vodka and she immediately spits out. Thus, Bruno Corelli, who is one of Kamala's best friends, intervenes to separate her from her two classmates and he, she kind of takes this help for granted as she felt he was kind of treating her like her child. So feeling upset, she decides to go home but as she does, the Terrigen Mist is released and after inhaling it, she passes out. She has this room where Captain Marvel, Captain America and Iron Man appear and lectures her for disobeying her parents and trying to stray away from her religion and culture. As Kamala wants to fit in and be more like a regular teenager as she grew up here. And when Carol asks Kamala who she wants to be, she says that she wants to be like Captain Marvel, being beautiful, awesome, butt kicking, and less complicated. Thus Carol leaves with her saying that she is going to get a total reboot that most people dream of, but it would not turn out the way that she thinks. Thus, after going through the Terra Genesis, she emerges from her Terra Gen cocoon as Carol Danvers within her original Miss Marvel costume. So it may seem like she literally got what she wanted, but it doesn't exactly turn out as she would think. For those that don't know what this means, in short, she is an inhuman, as it explains in the comics that long ago, one of her ancestors was genetically altered by the Kree, an alien race. Thus, the genetic legacy has been passed down through generations to her, and her powers have been awakened by the Terrigen Mist. However, Kamala doesn't notice yet until later on, currently confused to what happened. Seeming like she couldn't retain, looking like Carol Danvers as she shapeshifts back and forth, meaning that she is a polymorph, and as she keeps going along, she had shrunken down back to the waterfront where the party was, and notices that Zoe is with her boyfriend Josh, who is drunk, and accidentally makes her fall down the river, which Kamala instinctively tries to help Zoe by transforming to Miss Marvel, and while she does so, she remembers this idea from the Quran that her father always quoted, whoever kills one person, it is as if he has killed all of mankind, and whoever saves one person, it is as if he has saved all of mankind mankind, which had always made Kamala feel better when she was a little kid. And because no matter how bad things get, there are always people who rush in to help, and according to her father, they are blessed, which she successfully does so by enlarging her arm and grabs Zoe to safety. Afterwards, some people show up being impressed with Miss Marvel saving Zoe, albeit not known that it's actually Kamala, and wondering why Captain Marvel is back to being Miss Marvel. Thus, she hightails it back home and sneaks back in. Her brother, who was strolling by her room, hears a noise, and once she opens the door, he sees Kamala 
as herself, trying to explain as to why she isn't blonde and such. Thinking something weird had happened to her sister, he says that he'll try to take care of her, being the dear older brother that he is, but she reassures him that she's fine. Then he unfortunately informs her that her parents knew that she snuck out as Bruno had informed them and gotten grounded. The next day, Zoe was on the news saying how she was saved by Miss Marvel, which concerns Kamala as that wasn't a real Miss Marvel who saved her and the media was also starting to pick this up. So she tries to look online to figure out what's happened to her and kind of learning more about her powers. Anyway, later on, Kamala was approaching the Circle Q and it seemed like a robbery was going on. So she goes in as Captain Marvel to stop. It seemed like she had the upper hand, but something unexpected happened, which I won't spoil. So then later, Kamala reveals to Bruno that it's actually her. Then Bruno, wanting his brother Vic back safe and sound, he noted that Vic had mentioned something about the inventor was hanging out at, in an abandoned house in Greenville and Kamala pressed to go rescue Vic. However, she only managed to get so far, but had to retreat. So afterwards, both Kamala and Bruno pair again, testing out Kamala's newfound powers and making her new official costume becoming the new Miss Marvel. The reason why she took the name of Miss Marvel is because she felt that the name belongs to whoever had the courage to fight. From there on, she goes further in with her superhero escapades and Kamala continues to develop from then on. For me personally, I really like Kamala Khan. Although I can relate to her as far as being a Muslim and coming from a South Asian heritage, however, I don't like her just because of that. I can relate to her beyond those things, such as her nerdiness, dealing with life, embracing both worlds, etc. And I feel that many people can relate to her in those aspects, regardless of their gender, nationality, beliefs, and such. I also really enjoy her fun, likable personality, and like anyone, she has her flaws as a person. Like I mentioned earlier, she does share some similarities to Spider-Man, and I feel that she kind of takes the best elements of his character and implement it into her character, which is a plus for me because Spider-Man is my favorite superhero. Overall, she's a great character of solid characterization and development, and definitely one of the best new characters that Marvel had made in recent years. Another thing I want to mention about this comic is that as much as her religion is part of Kamala's character, it's never really been the main focal point of her comics, but rather something that's just a part of her character and you may learn a few things here and there. On to supporting characters. Bruno Corelli, as I mentioned earlier, is one of Kamala's best friends, has been so for a long time, and is a really solid supporting character as he helps Kamala out with her super own, and he is a very intelligent student, especially when it comes to science. And the comic does a really good job of showing how genuine their friendship is. And he actually has a crush on Kamala, as it was very much implied within the first issue. And like Kamala, they're both from immigrant families and also has a religious background, being Catholic. Nakia Bahadir is also one of Kamala's best friends that is quite devoted to her religion. She comes from a Turkish family and has been friends with Kamala for a long time. To be quite honest, there isn't really much to her character nor is she utilized much. I think it would have been cool to see her interact with Kamala more and see how strong their friendship is. It makes sense within the context of the story as to why she doesn't know that Kamala is Miss Marvel like Bruno does. And she does show some frustration of Kamala not letting her know what she's been up to despite being her best friend. But I still think they could have done more with her. Now to delve into Kamala's family. Her parents are Pakistani immigrants and are kind of like the stereotypical Asian parents being overprotective, strict and quite restrictive, cling to her culture, expect her to do good and do very well in her education and such. Her father, Yusuf Khan, is strict, although not to the same extent as his wife. He works in the bank and wishes that his son would get a job already. Her mother, Maniba Khan, is also strict on Kamala, more so than her father. They definitely do mean well and care for Kamala, wanting the best for her, but she does get in some arguments with her parents, more so over her mother due to wanting to fit in, but also not knowing that she's a super, which leads to them to assume that she's being reckless and disobedient. Her mother does gain some development, more so towards the end, although I can't say the same for her father. Amir Khan is Kamala's older brother, and I just realized he shares the same name as the famous Indian film actor and the professional boxer. Anyway, Amir is very religious and does definitely care for his younger sister, and I mentioned earlier that his father wants him to get a job already, which he does try doing so. Something to note of his characterization is that he is pretty much content with how devoted he is to his religion and does not understand why people think that he's not fully content with being just that. The villains such as the inventor and Cameron are not bad villains per se, but I don't think they're great either. I consider them more in the middle, being pretty serviceable as they got their motivations, which are fine. In fact, I think the inventor's motivation is quite sick if you ask me, and they serve their purpose fairly well leaving their mark. But I wouldn't put them on the same tier as the main iconic villains from Marvel. Although to be fair, they have been around for a very long time, so they've got much more stories with them fighting their respective heroes and fleshing them out. But I think that the inventor and Cameron could have had a bit more depth overall. 
car is great. Now, it doesn't go for photorealistic art style like you would see from Alex Ross, for example. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It generally goes for a more cartoony art style. However, I think it works in favor. Adrian Alfona, who does the majority of the art in the comic, has a great style for the series. As I mentioned earlier, that goes for a more cartoony art style. And I think it has personality to it as it fits Miss Marvel and suits the young, fun, quirky, and light-hearted nature of the character. The other artists who also worked on this were Jacob White, who also did art on a couple issues, most notably when Kamala teamed up with Wolverine. I think his style is not bad and actually quite good. While he does have a cartoony art style, it's not as detailed as the others, even though it does capture the feeling of Miss Marvel. That's not my favorite. There's also Elmo Bond art style, which also, like Wyatt, does have a good style, and I want to say that his style may resemble Alfonso's the closest, but there's not exactly as much detail. He may be my least favorite, but he's only been in one issue, so it doesn't give as much time to get used to his style. The last one is Takeshi Miyazawa, and I'd honestly say that he's my favorite artist on the book. Not only does his art style fit Miss Marvel very well, but he also has a manga-ish influence, which I can really appreciate as I really like anime and manga. While I do have my rankings on the artists, I generally think they do a good job of catching the tone of the series, and I don't think any of them are bad at all by any means. The pacing is really good as I don't think there's any scenes where I feel it drags on for too long nor too quick and progresses very nicely. Overall, this comic has a great new main hero, strong supporting cast, really good artwork that fits perfectly with the character and tone, solid pacing, and a well written story. With my only criticisms being that Nakia could have been utilized more, villains who are definitely serviceable could have had a bit more depth. Anyway, you can either pick it up with the first four volumes, or you can get the Omnibus, which contains all the contents in the four volumes if you want to save a bit of money. Choice is up to you. I forgot to mention that there's also some extra issues. There's the all new Marvel Now Point One Issue One, which which is more or less the same of what you usually get in the comic in general. There's also the S.H.I.E.L.D. issue with, with Agent Coulson and Gemma Simmons, but it's my least favourite since I didn't find it too interesting. And there's also two issues where she crosses over with Spider-Man, which is probably my favourite since it's different and it was interesting seeing her interact with Spidey. Another thing to mention is that you don't really need to read any comics prior to this to understand what's going on in the comic, as this would essentially be the season 1 of Kamal Khan's journey, so it's very newcomer friendly. I'd highly recommend reading it and give it a 9 out of 10. So tell me, what are your thoughts on the Miss Marvel Omnibus or Miss Marvel in general? If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like, share on social media, and please subscribe for more.